This is Earnings Preview, a look at companies reporting during the week, along with companies which may have positive or negative earnings surprises. This look ahead is for the week of May the 4th through the 8th. And what an interesting week this is going to be, I'm afraid. Uh, we'll get some details from Charles Ropelet, our senior market analyst at Zax.com. First of all, let's start with earnings. Uh, 850 companies approximately confirmed a report, about 86 members of the S&P 500 among them. What do you think? The latest market rally fueled by first quarter earnings or not? Not really. And if you actually look at the markets, and it's interesting because everybody talked about what a great month April was. And it was really great up to, from the 1st to the 16th. If you look at how the Dow actually performed from April 16th to April 30th, it only rose 43 points or half of a percent. Right. So all your gains in April were really front loaded, not back end loaded. And so it's really showing that people aren't really reacting to earnings and earnings are not really driving the markets higher. In fact, we've seen volume drop off and it's, the rally has lost some steam. So from this point forward, though, uh, in order for any upward momentum to sustain itself, companies are really going to have to show proof that they're growing earnings. Right, and that's one of the questions when you look at May. We're really not going to have the earnings reports. We will have them come out of the retailers. I do expect the retailers in aggregate to actually report better than expected numbers, but then you're really in a period where you won't have companies peer announcing. Uh, most companies would have already reported, so you're kind of in a void here. Uh, over the last five years, May has done pretty well, but in general, there is that old saying of sell in May and go away. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of questionable when you look at the rally about what's going to prop it higher um, unless we start seeing some really better than expected economic news. Well, we've got a lot of that coming out in this week as well. And uh, not only do we have construction spending, we've got employment survey by ADP coming out. But we've also, and we've got the, the non-farm payroll numbers coming out. Uh, Big Ben Bernanke is going to make a trip here to Chicago where we're located to speak to the Chicago Fed during the week. And the bank stress tests, we can't forget about those results due out on Thursday of this week. Right, and there's a couple of things. First of all, well, let's talk about the week and we'll kind of go backwards because the week will be back and loaded. Uh, on Friday, we will get the unemployment numbers. They are forecasting a slight improvement in non-farm payrolls. But if you really look how non-farm payrolls have been since about November, they really kind of held steady in a range, really haven't gotten worse, really haven't gotten better. So when you see an actual improvement, we're looking at about 40,000 fewer jobs lost in March than in February, sorry, lost in April than in March. Um, it's really not that big an improvement. But right before that, when we get a Thursday, that could be one of the big things in there is the bank stress test. Mm -hmm. Those results have been delayed. The banks have been lobbying hard against the current results, which nobody's seen yet, trying to evidently polish them up and get them to look in their way. Uh, my big concern about the stress test results is really how much validity will people give them? And my concern is that people are going to look at those stress tests <laughs> and really put it in a context of where they have as much faith in those, er in those stress test results as they will in Homer Simpson here managing their local nuclear plant. And I just don't think people are going to trust the results because they are going to be engineered, particularly to favor the mega cap banks such as Citigroup and Bank of America. And so I do worry that there's going to be a validity question about them and that people aren't going to trust things. As a result, I do expect a lot of volatility on Thursday, a lot of volatility on Friday, but it's almost impossible to say how people are going to react to those numbers and what the report says. We're going to have to wait and see. And I know people want exactly, they want to know what do I do with my money this week? But I think it's very important to understand that this is a huge question mark facing the market near the end of the week. So could we be looking at a first part of the week that uh, where the market just trades sideways ahead of all of these developments later in the week? That's my guess. I think we'll have some movements. And keep in mind, we couldn't go sideways and have the, have the Dow move one or 200 points in one direction or the other. So it doesn't mean the stocks aren't going to move, but I think by and large, you're not going to see a clear direction till the end of the week. And even then, it's very possible we might have one reaction to the stress test and a completely different reaction to the employment numbers. So, you know, if you're an active trader, I really think you have to look going into Thursday, holding all cash, not trying to play ahead of the stress test. Let's see what they, what they are. If they're actually released on Thursday, say in the, uh, in the article here, they're penciled in, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's still a chance that we could see the tr it's stress true. test results push back even further. True. Hopefully not, but uh, it's a big question mark, and we'll have to see how things play out. All right. Well, uh, Homer's not wearing his mask uh, for <laughs> swine flu. Just wanted to call that to your attention. I think he's already had his shots. <laughs> 
What will it be next? It seems <laughs> I have to put up with here. Who knows? Maybe puppets next week. I don't know. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. And if you want to take a look at the text version of Charles' earnings preview, in which you can view all of the companies that are on the calendar to report, as well as some companies that Charles has identified that may surprise to the upside, and at least one that may surprise to the downside, go to Zaxx.com, look for the earnings preview headline, click on it. It'll take you right to it, and who knows what else uh, he has there. <laughs> With Charles Roplet, I'm Terry Ruffalo.